Okay, this is uh, my Arduino journey video number two. And uh, first thing, I want to give a great big shout out to Tom Kavilchak of Tom's Trains and Things. He helped me uh, get my sensor talking to my JMRI sensor table. So thanks a lot, Tom. I really appreciate it. So what I'm showing you here is just kind of the way it sits on my uh, test track area in my den. And uh, I'm using these photo light sensor things. And uh, as you can see, it's green now, which means it's seeing the light. And if I cover it with my finger, it'll go out. That little blue box has a screw in it where you can control the intensity so I can fix that distance where it sees, uh, sees darkness and changes. So I'm plugged into the uh, power in the ground, red and the black, going into my five volt connection there. What I'm gonna do is when I get out to my uh, real layout in the garage after it cools off is I'm gonna take these two, the red and the gray, ground into power and I'm going to plug them into this bus bus box I guess you call it I'm not really quite sure what that is so anyway I'm just going to have the power going in here and then I'll run a bus wire out along my track where I can then t-connect use some t-connectors to connect these little wires to the bus line and I won't have to do any soldering. Yay, I hate soldering. So that's how I'm going to power it on the actual sensor wire. I'm going to have to cut that in half and find some connectors that uh, I can splice in an extra long piece because I don't have to be a home run wire from the Arduino pin out to the sensor. So uh, a little more research on that. That's kind of how I'm imagining I'm going to set this up out on my layout. Here's uh, this is just my test track. Put a couple of little sensors uh, on it. So this number 23 is where it's connected now. So when I cover it up, you can see it changes to red. Open it up, changes to green. Okay. The one on this other side, number 22, I don't have a sensor in that. But let me go here and explain how I was able to set this up. So in my sensor tables, let me bring those up here. Tools, tables, sensors. Okay, I just set up several of them 22 to 28 i think that's all i'm going to need and i made the numbers correspond with the pins on the arduino mega which are over to the right side there's a whole bunch of these pins so you can see as i let me turn off that switch you can see it changed inactive active inactive okay so you can see in the table it's changing it's also changing over on the uh, panel on my layout uh, diagram so let me go back to here so what you have to do is you configure your base station and i made the index and the pin numbers match and uh, when you add a pin and let me just go ahead and put in 21 double click that 21 get rid of that zero all right let's try that again 21 okay make this 21 and I'll 
click out of it and I'll save that sensor save changes to base station I'll say yes then it says you want to write your sensors and turnouts to the EEPROM and what that means is do you want these to be stored on your Arduino's memory so next time you start your uh, JMR software they'll be there so I say yes and uh, so now next time I Let me just double do that twice. So next time I come in, those sensors will be set up and I could just change my uh, pin to 2021. And uh, that's really important. That's a problem I was having. I just couldn't get these things to talk to the Arduino and Tom helped me through that. So that's how that works. And uh, I'm not going to do much else with this on my test track. I may write a little script. In fact, I will write a little script showing you how when I change this. See, I can change that even though it doesn't change the sensor. I guess it's not a two-way connection. Um, there we go, on and off. So I might write a little script uh, here as a demo and uh, show you how to do the get the sensor to stop the train stay tuned